an Edmonds kind of day. It's an Edmonds kind of day. Welcome to another awesome Edmonds kind of day. Coming up on My Edmonds News TV, it's time to pull those elastic waist pants out of the closet. The Taste of Edmonds comes to Edmonds on August 8th through 10th, and we'll have somebody from the most popular band at the Taste, the Beatniks, in studio with us. Another opening, another show. The Edmonds Driftwood Players are proud to be celebrating 56 years of entertaining audiences in our community. Conveniently located in downtown Edmonds, the Wade James Theater is close to fine dining for before or after the show. For performance schedules and ticket information, please visit us at driftwoodplayers.com. Close, affordable, fun. The Edmonds Driftwood Players, come play with us. Welcome to Edmonds Today. I'm your host, Teresa Whipple. In the studio today, via internet magic, we have Mark Nelson, the lead guitarist for the Beatniks. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me on. Tell me about the Beatniks and their long history with the Taste of Edmonds, which is coming to town on August 8th. The Beatniks started in 1990, and we've played the Taste of Edmonds every Friday night in the beer garden since that time. Um, it's been a great two decades in Edmonds. Everyone in Edmonds talks about the Beatniks and how they can't wait to see them play in the beer garden. Why is it that you're so popular at the Taste of Edmonds? Well, I think you said the magic word there, Teresa. Beer garden. Ah. I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The more you drink, the better we sound. There might be some truth to that. You were telling me earlier how the group was started. You were a group of high school buddies who got together to form the band? Yeah, we all come from Gig Harbor, uh, knew each other through high school and played in various bands together. By the time the Beatniks had formed, we had all moved out of Gig Harbor and were living in Seattle. But it was that, uh, that tie and the, the common thread of Gig Harbor that brought us all together. And you actually got the group together after one of your friends made a promise to his boss, is that right? The drummer of the band at the time was a real go-getter and tried to score some extra points with his boss. So he promised his boss that his band would play at his boss's daughter's upcoming wedding. Well, he didn't think that the boss would call him out on this, but eventually the boss did. So uh, off the cuff and on, in a very short amount of time, we had to put together a band to play this wedding. That band turned out to be the Beatniks. Very good story. And you ended up playing Beatles music because you had a very short time to put this group together and it was music that you were familiar with. Is that what you said? Well, Beatles have a lot of great songs. Uh, it's tough to go wrong when you're doing the Beatles and that's kind of what we knew at the time. So we went with it. You also told me that you had a connection with a famous person in town, Paul Allen. Tell me more about that. When Paul Allen was working to get the uh, new stadium built for the Seahawks, we did a lot of work in his fundraising campaigns. Um, played several gigs around town with Paul, played at his house for a fundraiser. Um, said, I, I don't want to say that uh, Mr. Allen and the Beatniks were uh, best buddies or anything, but there was, there was certainly a, a time period when we spent a lot of time with him. You didn't have an opportunity to do any playing for the Seahawks during their Super Bowl season, did you? Well, no, not this last year, but um, we, um, at one time, were the house band for the Seahawks um, and played every home game in the kingdom for a couple of years with the Seahawks. And I I'm, I'm, like to tell people that we were the last rock band ever to play in the kingdom as we did the last regular season Seahawks game that year and just a couple weeks later they imploded the dome. That's quite a claim to fame. So Friday night, what time does the set start at the Taste? Eight o'clock. I think there's bands before us. Um, we'll play eight to ten. It's always a nice night down there. Always a lot of fun. And usually lots of sunshine and great food and fun. Mark, if people want to learn more about the Beatniks, how can they do that? Please go uh, check us out at thebeatniks.com. Uh, you can find links to our schedule, contact information for the band, and uh, general information about what it is that we do. Thanks again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on August 8th. Yeah, and we look forward to it too. Thanks again for having me.
Have you received an email or a phone call with an offer that seems too good to be true? That's not an unusual occurrence and we have Sergeant Mark Marsh from the Edmonds Police Department here to help us figure out what is real and what isn't. Sergeant Marsh, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So tell me more about the types of things that people might be facing with these scams, these offers that you see or hear about coming through the Edmonds Police Department. Well, certainly. Uh, we'll start by talking about the, f the phone calls that, that people will get. And one scam that they use is a person will call, um, usually it's a grandparent, and uh, to, to kind of tug at their heartstrings on this. But, you know, they'll say, you know, your granddaughter, grandson is in jail, and, and they'll use a, a different country. For, for example, Canada is fairly common because we're so close. And they'll say, you know, we need $500 to get little Johnny out of jail, you know, for his, you know, unrelated charge, you know, that they'll, they'll make up something. And, you know, the grandparent will go, oh, shoot, you know, I really want to get him out. And so they'll ask to be, have money wired to a specific account. And usually that ends up being somewhere else out of country. And it's not uncommon for Eastern Europe uh, to be used as a location for the money to be sent. And... Then, you know, once the hook is set, the suspect will then call back and go, little Johnny missed their court date. Now it's $5,000 to get them out of jail. And, you know, we need this money as soon as possible to get him out, you know, or he's going to be sent to prison or some something other very dramatic. And, you know, and the grandparent a lot of times will, you know, go, oh, shoot, you know, I really want to do the right thing and help them out and wire the money off. And that money's gone. We'll never see it again and rarely is it ever recovered. And I know there's also another one that you had mentioned earlier that uh, we were talking that is very common and what is that one? Well that is the very popular lottery scheme uh -huh. and you know you will get a phone call that says you know this is so and so from the Nigerian or Ethiopian those are pretty common lottery. And that should be a red flag shouldn't it? Yes especially <laughs> if somebody hasn't been to Nigeria or Ethiopia right. but you know it's you know, they just prey on the fact that people won't remember filling out something at, at a trade show or wherever. And mm -hmm. let's say you've been selected to win, you know, five gazillion dollars. And, you know, unfortunately, people can get greedy. And so they'll go, oh, that is great. You know, I can finally retire and move to, you know, Camino Island or wherever the case <laughs> may be. You know, and uh, the person on the phone will go, we will send you your money certified mail as soon as you pay a small processing fee. We were talking about what happens just even on your doorstep coming to your door. What can happen that way that's scam related? Well, we're really getting into the time of year during the summer where we'll have a lot of people going door to door uh, soliciting and it's 90% of the time it's elderly people and they'll come up and say, hey, I was driving by, I noticed your gutters need cleaning or your roof needs repaired or your driveway needs repaired and they'll offer for a nominal fee to make those repairs and just pay me cash up front and you know I'll clean your gutters or fix your roof and do your driveway and uh, you know they will do some quick shoddy work so that it gives the appearance of that they're really doing something and then they'll they'll find something else you know like uh, I was cleaning your gutters I noticed that there's some rot up there and I can fix your shingles you know for an extra five hundred dollars or a thousand and and uh, you know they'll they'll even look like they're starting work but as soon as they get that cash in hand, a lot of times they just leave. The key, is, as you and I had discussed earlier, is really there is no harm in waiting uh, a little bit uh, to check no. this person out, right? And right. in fact, we're going to have on the screen um, a link to the police department website with some more information about what people can check out. But, you know, just saying, we'll call you back, come back later. Uh, if that person is legitimate, that should not be a problem, right? Correct. You know, a simple phone call to even the, the city clerk with the city of Edmonds, you know, if you don't have internet access, and just ask, is, uh, is this business legitimate? Do they have a business license? Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the web page, you should be able to access the city code and look up what people need to have in order to go, go door to door, and that would be under the peddlers and solicitors section. And by simply asking somebody, you know, when they come to your door, you know, are you licensed and bonded? 
Mm -hmm. You know, do you have a license, you know, with the city of Edmonds, and they have to have some form of identification with a picture on it, you know, nothing that's typed out, you mm -hmm. know, without that, you know, and uh, just take your time, you know, make a phone call. And if there's any doubts, you feel free to call the police department and you should be able to get somebody who can give you an answer and maybe some tips. But take your time. It's it's not an emergency, you know. And you it might save you some money. Save you some money and a lot of heartache. That's right. Well, thank you so much for the tips. I appreciate you coming in today. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Hi, I'm Jeanette Turner with Edmonds Happy Hour, and today I'm here with Andrew Lecky of Bar Dojo, and he's here to make a specialty drink for us. Welcome to Happy Hour here at Bar Dojo. Uh, today I'm going to be making a Dragon's Fire. It's one of our specialty cocktails for Happy Hour. Um, I start off with a little bit of lime and serrano pepper. And I hear you also have a specialty item for Happy Hour on the menu. Yes, we uh, do a pork belly taco. It's actually quite delicious. Um, a lot of people really enjoy that, that dish. On the weekends, we do a weekend brunch. Um, we are open from 10 to 2 on Saturday and Sunday. We have chicken and waffles along with an uh, assortment of other delicious things like a ginger French toast. Oh, um, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, it's quite delicious. So. Oh my gosh. So, and you're in the middle of making this here. It looks yeah. like you muddled some ice. Yeah, I muddled some ice along with the lime and serrano peppers. Got a little bit of tequila. Or a lot more. Uh, <laughs> do you really want to be happy? That's good. Yeah. And then we put a little bit of sour in there. Mm -hmm. And when did you start Bar Dojo? Uh, we started at the beginning of 2013. My business partner owned Shubidoo Catering. And essentially from that point, we moved forward with the restaurant. And we've been going ever since. Shake this thing up. for you to enjoy. May I taste it, please? You most definitely can. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, it's got you. a little kick to it. Yeah, a little spice in there for you. So. Well, thank you for sharing the recipe with us today. No problem. And I hope people come on down to Bar Dojo. Yeah, come and be happy with us here at Bar Dojo. Welcome back to Edmonds Today. I'm your host, Teresa Whipple. In the studio with us today, we have Kate Nichols. Kate is the founder of a 5K Edmonds Fun Run Walk, and she's going to tell us more about that. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. So tell me about this August 13th event that mm -hmm. you are involved with, um, what it's about, who it benefits, and how people can get involved. Okay. It's a fundraiser to raise funds for my MOPS group, which is stands for Mothers of Preschoolers, and we are at the Edmonds United Methodist Church group. The walk is, um, we started it last year, and it was an idea, the idea was it's a way for the Edmonds Facebook group, Edmonds Moms, to get together face to face instead of just online all the time, and get to walk down the street with our families and have a picnic afterwards and enjoy getting to know each other. And the best part of this event is the name. Yes. Which Edmund's is, moms run this town. Right, right, <laughs> which is really true. And uh -huh. if anybody who has not yet been on an Edmund's mom's Facebook group post and mm -hmm. seen the way people truly do know what's going on in town, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and you have been involved as a participant. I know you're not a founder of the Edmonds mm -hmm. Moms Facebook page, but tell me a little bit more about how that got started. So one of my good friends um, started the group, I don't know how many years ago, but it's grown to about 3,000 moms, I think, from not just Edmonds, but surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea of it is just a support system for moms that are home with their kids, or not home with their kids, but that have questions that have to do with parenting. And so it's been a great way to uh, give resources to moms f with any kind of questions that they have. Um, they also kind of sell and trade items that they might need or want to get rid of. Um, spreading information about programs that might be going on that other moms need to know about. So. And you had a great story about a personal experience that the Edmonds Moms Facebook group helped you with. Why don't you share that mm -hmm. with us? I was out on a walk with my daughter in her stroller. We were going along sun Sunset, 
And as two-year-olds do, she kicked off one of her shoes, and I didn't realize it, of course, until the walk was over. So we went back over the distance of the walk a couple times. I never found it, and I was upset. So I posted a picture of the left shoe on Edmund's mom's, and it only took a couple days before someone that I knew, actually, from my mops group found it and reposted that she had found the right shoe. So the left met the right and all was well again. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. That's a great story. Well, again, remind us of the event, uh, date, time, um, and how they can register. Right. Um, it is on Wednesday, August 13th at 5.30 p.m. And you can go to our website, which is at edmondsmomsrunthistown.eventbrite.com to register. Okay. And we will have that information posted uh, on our, our screen so that people can see it. Perfect. Thank you again for coming in today to talk to us. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's an Edmonds kind of day. It's an Edmonds kind of day. Welcome to another awesome Edmonds kind of day.